Now, moving swiftly on, we've got two more talks before a break. Please now uh, welcome Catherine Hadler. She is the chair of the ISA ISRU topical team and a lecturer at Imperial College in London. Welcome, Catherine. We can see you. Hopefully, we can hear you too. I hope you. Hello, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to um, to present during this open, opening session of Space Resources Week. It's a real honour. Um, my name is Catherine Adler. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Earth Science and Engineering at Imperial College in London. I come originally from the terrestrial mining sector, from mineral processing or beneficiation, and I'm the lead of the topical team. Hopefully my slides will appear now. There we go. See if I can just forward my slides. Could you move on to the next slide, please? a little bit of background as to who we are in the topical team. We are a network of European researchers from across the space resources flow sheet, uh, flow sheet or value chain, from exploration right through to extraction. Our aim is to consider the extraction of lunar resources from end to end in order that we can identify the research gap. So you'll notice a lot of crossover um, with George in the previous talk. We formed around three years ago. Uh, the people who have contributed to workshops and to outputs that, we've, uh, that we have developed are listed at the bottom of this slide. So our objectives as a, as a network will have been to identify potential resources on the moon, processes that can be applied to produce them, and favorable approaches to extraction, beneficiation, and storage. What we've been focusing on in the last year is about identifying associated knowledge gaps, technology gaps, and research needs, and that is what I will focus on in this update. Could we move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. So back in Space Resources Week 2019, about 18 months ago, we presented one of the early outputs from our early conversations about uh, space resources and the entire end-to-end -end process. And we developed this very basic generic flow sheet that can be used to describe most space resources processes. And those early conversations revolved around the need for a common terminology and, a, and, and to bring together uh, the language. In order to design a complete process, we need to know what the upstream and downstream process performance and requirements are. And therefore, we need to know what the basic metrics are to evaluate the, any given process in that chain. So, for example, in mineral processing, we evaluate performance by grade and recovery further downstream. Then we're more likely to use chemical engineering terms such as yield, conversion, uh, and so on. So we talked about bringing together uh, this terminology so that there's complete transparency about the way in which we are evaluating process performance. But recently we've been thinking about identifying research gaps and then it becomes rather more complex. Next slide, please. Over the last year, we've been asked to prepare a research roadmap containing key research questions as part of the Science and Space Environment Roadmap um, exercise with ESA. Uh, the, these roadmaps are currently available for community consultation on the OSIP platform, and you will find the Space Resources section in Physical Science um, under Applied Science. One of the big problems that we keep coming across time and time again when we discuss outstanding research questions is how to organize and bring structure to the research questions that we have and the gaps in the research. 
we can ask questions at a number of different levels. And it's, it's a real challenge to say for something that has not yet been demonstrated at all in situ, then how do we, how do we consolidate these research gaps? On the right hand side, you'll see um, uh, one of the, the outputs from our workshops online last year. Now, I don't expect you to be able to read this, of course, it's very small, but it gives you an idea of the complexity of the discussion that we had. There were notes on top of this um, that, that really, we've, we've really had to fight to battle through this. Next slide, please. And these are the reasons why. We can take a look, we can take a number of different approaches to evaluate the research gaps in space resource utilization. So if we take a look first at specific te technology, we can consider research questions around any of the specific technologies for extracting um, space resources. So this list is by no means exhaustive. We could look, for example, at microwave heating and sintering. And the kind of questions that we might ask are, what are the best microwave frequencies? How can we control quality? Can we make this a continuous process? On the other hand, we can look at oxygen production, and then the questions become more about what's the relationship between the feedstock and the process performance, and I'll discuss that in a bit more detail um, further on. But at the equipment scale, at the technology scale, finding and collating uh, research gaps is actually a relatively focused activity. Next slide, please. We can take a step back then and look at an entire end-to-end -end process for um, for a specific resource extraction. So the flow sheet that you hear, see here is a general flow sheet for let's say oxygen production. Now here we can ask questions of the individual processes, but also we're looking at interactions between those different stages. So for example, for oxygen production, the particle size the distribution, the particle size that we feed into the reactor has a significant effect on the reaction rate, on how we operate that reactor, and a number of different process um, effects. That particle size defines what we need from the beneficiation stage. The beneficiation stage needs then define what we need from excavation. But each of those stages have their own limitations and their own operating ranges. So now we have to ask questions across the entire flow sheet uh, to, to integrate that flow sheet. Next slide, please. The final way we can look at this in trying to identify the research gaps and structuring the research gaps is we can look at it from a, research, a resource perspective. So we can be guided entirely by the resource and its properties. So we can look at things like location, the properties of the resources, so um, concentration, phase, associations. We can look at the host material properties, so geotechnical properties, particle size distribution, and so on, and how those properties then, um, then really define how we need to extract the resource and how they affect the properties of the, the final uh, end use of the product. And the other thing here we've got is variability. Now, variability is of critical importance. In the terrestrial mining sector, all variability can mean the difference between meeting production targets and having unexplained losses in metal recovery. So in other words, between being profitable or not. And this issue of the effect of variability on process performance is, is also important for space resources. It's not just important on Earth, but also on the moon. And we need to understand the effect of variability on the way in which we extract our resources. So the knowledge, um, the knowledge of a resource can, can define our eventual process. It can also establish limits on viable operation. For example, minimum concentrations to be economically viable for a given energy cost. Next slide, please. So we can see the kind of issues that we are battling with to try and identify these research gaps. But ultimately, we need to account for the resource, including its end use. We need to account for the host material, uh, the location, and the technology. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can take an available technology, and we can target the resource and the location depending on the needs of that available technology. On the other hand, we can take a specific resource 
and develop technology and processes to meet the extraction requirement of that specific resource. Now, the reality is that we probably have a compromise between the two, but these are the two different approaches to developing end-to-end -end processes. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples now. Next slide, please. So let's look first at water extraction, and by this, we're focusing specifically on water ice. So this is very much a resource-focused approach. For the resource-focused approach, then the questions, the research questions we ask are very much focused on how we select the best process for extracting that resource and how we, um, how we address issues relating to location. If we're extracting water ice at the lunar poles, for example, then there's numerous challenges associated with the, the location and we have, to, we have to solve those problems associated with that location. Next slide, please. And here's an example um, of, of some of the challenges. Now, I've put this slide in, firstly, because I really like this slide, um, but secondly, because I think it gives a good indication of scale. So on the left-hand side, we've got Shackleton Crater, and often we see images of, um, or maps of Houston overlaid Shackleton Crater. Now, I haven't been to Houston, so uh, the context is, is lost on me, but I have been to a lot of very big mines. On the right-hand side, you can see the, one, of the, one of the big copper mines. Um, this is in just outside of Salt Lake City in Utah. The trucks that you see on the right-hand side will carry about 250 tonnes of ore or waste. And this gives us an indication of the kind of scales that we're dealing with and the kind of location based uh, challenges that must be addressed if we are to, um, to search for a specific resource such as water ice. Next slide, please. On the other hand, for the technology focused approach, um, we can look at, for example, oxygen production, either through molten salt electrolysis, the FFC Cambridge approach, or, um, or hydrogen reduction. This is a different approach where our questions are slightly shifted into how our feedstock then affects the performance of the reactor, and particularly around what is the optimal feedstock for that reactor. Next slide, please. Now, I showed this slide uh, 18 months ago at the last Space Resources Week, but I still think it's important and interesting to show here. So uh, on this slide, we have a graph, and this is a study that we looked at investigating the effect of theoretical beneficiation on reactor size, size and um, mining scale for a hydrogen reduction. So if we carry out some theoretical beneficiation to some regolith, we can increase the ilmenite grade, and that's on your x-axis. So on x-axis, we have ilmenite grade as we remove components from the regolith with the increased ilmenite grade. Um, and on the, for the blue triangles, this is the mining rate, the orange diamonds are the reactor size, effectively. As we strip away components from the, from the regolith, then the mining rate increases in order to meet a target oxygen production. But on the other hand, the reactor size decreases because we're feeding it with a higher grade of ilmenite. So we have a trade-off here between the scale of the mine and the scale of the reactor. And this has huge implications for the way in which we size on equipment, the energy requirements, operational costs, and scheduling. So these are big strategic decisions about how we go about designing the complete process and the scales of, those pro of that process. Next slide, please. So, regardless of the approach, whether we go for a technology-focused approach or a resource-specific um, approach, we can still uh, we can still construct general research que uh, questions that are applicable regardless. And this is what we did um, in the topical team for the research roadmap exercise. And our questions are um, include which resource characteristics are required to establish the viability of resource? How have geological and environmental processes affected the properties of resources? How do those properties then affect the extraction process? 
What about the local environmental conditions? How do they affect resource and operations? What's the variability? I can't talk about variability enough, really. Um, and the effect of variability on processing and product variability. And finally, what are the physical and chemical processes that can be applied to extract and process local resources? One of the really exciting things about this field is that with very careful design, we can use the same data and samples to answer fundamental science questions and to design our end-to-end -end processes. And I think that's a, a really exciting opportunity. Next slide, please. So to sum up, um, in order to design integrated processes, then we need to know more, we need to know a lot about the resources, we need to know the characteristics of the resource and the host material, but we also need more guidance and transparency from downstream technology, from downstream operations, so that we can understand the limitations, operating ranges of the proposed technology. We need both of these things so that we can design this whole process. So a complete flow sheet for space resource utilization can only be proposed if we have inter complete integration across all these processes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Catherine. We've got a couple of quick questions for you. Uh, short answers, if at all possible, due to the time. Um, Ollie James asks, has there been any on technology required, um, he probably means research or work done on technology required for processing metals mined from NEAs? As far as I know, this is a major flaw which still needs to be solved. That's there's been limited um, research in that area. The focus is very much on um, on next stage, so um, so the moon in the first instance. Thank you, that was a fantastically concise answer. Tony asks, has there been any consideration of recycling on the moon of the kilotons of aerospace grade junk in LEO to speed up ISRU by eliminating mining and processing as recycling in zero G space is not practical? It is an area that I believe is, um, is being investigated and it absolutely should be investigated. I think for, if we're talking about sustainable space travel, then we need to make use of all resources that we have to hand and um, old existing technology that, is, that, 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 is, that can be used should be used. Thank you again, Catherine, and for your wonderful talk. I'm sure you'll be online and open to questions for the, the length of the week that we have to come. Thank you again. Thank you very much.